And now, it's Coast View with Ricky Matthews. Brought to you by J. Allen Toyota and AGJ Systems and Networks on Super Talk 103.1 FM. Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women who are making coastal Mississippi such an amazing place to live, work, and play. We have a great show today, but before we get to our first guest, let me share a couple of really inspiring uh, you know, quotes that I've, that I've run across just in the past couple of days. One was posted by my friend Brad White. Brad is the former chief of staff for Tate Reeves and is now heading up the Mississippi Department of Transportation. He's going to do a great job, but he posted this. And I just think it, it makes so much sense. Uh, a good life is when you assume nothing, do more, need less, smile often, dream big, laugh a lot, and realize how blessed you are. That came from uh, lovewideopen.com. I don't know who specifically said it, but Brad shared it, and it's so true. You know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a lot about humility and being humble and giving more and expecting less in return and always realizing how blessed we really are. Uh, here's another one by my friend Susan Griggs. Again, one of, one of my more positive friends, but it, this is what she posted. And this came from Unbounded Mind. Uh, be strong, but not rude. Be kind, do not, but not weak. Uh, be humble, but not timid. Be proud, but not arrogant. Yeah, I think, you know, in our social media worlds, a lot of people could probably take that advice, but I think it probably hits home with you if you really think about it. And then the last one is one I actually ran across this morning. It's by a guy named Jonas Salk. And he said this, the reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. The reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. Think about it. Whether it's being a father, you know, you get if you do that well, you get to do more of it because it's, it's kind of contagious. Whether it's in your career. Uh, whether it's you know the work that you do in the community, I think it's it's a it's a pretty powerful statement. It gives us a lot to think about. Now let's move to today's guest, my uh, friend, the singer songwriter Steve Azar, the music mu music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi, and host of NA Mississippi Minute on Super Talk Mississippi. Good morning, Steve. How are you, buddy? Oh, brother Ricky, how we doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. Hey, listen, you heard that last. Quote, the reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. That's definitely true as a recording artist. But what? how does that hit home to you when you hear that? I mean, that says it all in a lot of ways. Uh, first of all, in my mind, I always felt like where preparation meets opportunity. So when, you, when the opportunity finally comes, you cannot be prepared enough. So I think you're sort of on this constant journey and on this road uh, and, and you've got all these turns you have to make along the way that you, you didn't expect because everything doesn't work out according to plan. But the more you're prepared, the more of those opportunities are aligned for you and you, you, know, you have a better opportunity to stay on track. Uh, yeah. Sometimes there's obstacles that are just coming at you. It, it could be somebody else that's out of your hands, but I just do believe if you're always prepared for that op next opportunity that comes then it's like dominoes falling. You, you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Listen, I had Will Primos on my show Tuesday, and uh, you know it was just a terrific visit. And he talked about Malcolm Gladwell's book, uh, The Breaking Point. And you know what he said is about it's about positioning yourself so that when the moment occurs, you're you're ready to take advantage of. It. But the other point he, he made, which I think is probably even more important, is the whole notion of ten thousand hours that you gotta you gotta put the time in if you want to be successful in whatever your endeavor is. And when you hear the thought of 10,000 hours, you probably look at it more as you put 100,000 hours into what you're doing, don't you? I, mean, I did it since I was 11. So, but, but you know what? I think it's also the quality of hours you put in. I think that you, know, you have to be fully engaged in each hour, I think. Now, some people are born with more talent than others. But you and I both have seen people in life that it, that just just like uh, you've seen them people, and I did it, past folks that are more talented because I was putting in the time, and it was quality time, you know. And then they just weren't because they were so gifted that they felt like, oh, I'm just that good. And then then you've got those folks that are always making excuses because, oh, I could have done this, but I decided, but no, you didn't work at it. 
you, <laughs> you didn't choose to do it. I mean, so, I mean, anybody that's going to be successful in life, those hours, quality hours are extremely important for the outcome. I can't agree more. You know, it's, I, I, it's so interesting the contrast between, between someone who might work in a corporate environment and work eight to four or eight to five, and then you spend time with an entrepreneur, someone like you, Steve, who doesn't really know what time off looks like. You're you're always engaged in uh, something or another. <laughs> you know, that's that's Ricky, so important. Ricky, I just want to come to your cabin, whatever you call a cabin, whatever that is. Is a, it's a it's a you know it's a hotel compared to a motel cabin, but. But uh, and just unwind. But during this time now, what's coming at me now, I'm I don't know what to do because I don't want to say no. I want to play catch up and I love playing. But there's some journeys that I'm that I'm looking at on my calendar that may be impossible to make. And yeah. everybody's playing catch up now. You know, so they are. You know, they you are. Want to, you want to play and you want to take care of your guys. I want my guys to work uh, yeah. more than anything. But some of it is not going to be doable. It'll, it'll kill us. Well, some of the things. Let's. Do, what we. What I want to do. We, we'll come back to that in a second. But if you think about the pent up demand, so the the part of your work that involves um, getting back on the road and doing concerts, that that is now reemerged as an opportunity. The yeah. part of your work that's involved in a nonprofit efforts across this country, I can only imagine that the as those start to ramp back up again, those requests are coming in fast and furious. The opportunities to collaborate. You have so many different collaboration opportunities. And then people need to know that you're you know at the core you're a songwriter. So there's this opportunity over here, not just for collaboration, but just in requests that you get. It could be your music for for movies. It could be music for any number of different things. Uh, I want to get into all that because you're you're sort of What's going to be interesting about that part of the conversation is coming out of the pandemic, a singer-songwriter, Where, what, what are the opportunities and how do you start to evaluate them so that you can you know, figure out how to find your new normal, whatever that's going to be. But Steve, before we get into all that, I went to Spotify this morning. And uh, for people who are not listening to In a Mississippi Minute, I want to highly recommend it. Steve has a, a knack for having conversations with so many interesting people. And one of the things I did is I just went down the list this morning and I immediately was drawn to some of the shows that I've listened to recently that just stood out to me. And uh, I want to kind of go through that for just a second, sure. if you don't mind. And well, you know, that'll give people sort of a flavor for what your show is all about. But You've, uh, you've, you know, you, you're, you're based in the Delta, so you're this incredible sort of eclectic mix of music, and people have, have, uh, have really said that you have a soul in your music, and that's because you were based in Greenville, and that's kind of sort of where you learned how to do music. So when you have a conversation with a young man, uh, like, for example, uh, Kingfish Ingram that you had recently, your ability to connect with him and the stories that you guys told and the talent that, that's emerging in Kingfish, really, even though you didn't have the opportunity to have him play, the reality is this guy is incredibly gifted and just a signal of the kind of gifts that we have all across the state of Mississippi. But what stands out in, in that conversation with you? Man, first of all, uh, his intelligence at a young age already you can tell that he's been very experienced, and he's also, you mentioned something earlier about not being arrogant. There, you have to be confident, but not arrogant. If you can walk that line, then you do. Then, then you remain humble. He's extremely humble. He knows where he came from, which is Clarksdale. Um, he's su suffered loss already. His mom was like, you know, it for him. She, before when you tried to get a, you tried to get him booked, you had to call his mom, you know? And now he's in the real world of music where it's not all in the family. It's, you know, other folks that he's got to depend on and trust. And I feel like he's in a really good place. Um, musically, he's a prodigy. It's just, it doesn't make any sense that he's that good this soon. He's been that good since he was 16 or 17. But as he makes this journey now, all of the stuff, that he, it, it's just going to turn into something really special. And, you know, it's with him, it's in the water. It's in his genetic makeup, right? So, uh, but but I love the opportunity, how it happened. This is what's great about, you know, serving as music and culture ambassador, the thing that I love the most is when I hear something like this, this shows it works. He went to a little, the, the Delta Blue, the, excuse me, the Delta Blues Museum in Clarksdale had a little thing for kids. They could come, a little camp, they could come in and play some songs and that. 
And that's where it happened. If he doesn't get that opportunity and is not mentored by folks that are capable of mentoring him, then who knows what he's doing. But that was it. It turned it just turned the faucet on. And who knew that this crazy talent was already going to be there? So I was really impressed by him uh, already at this tender age of 22 and what he's accomplished already. But you got to understand when he plays in Mississippi or around this area in the tri, you know, Arkansas, Louisiana, all that, he makes a certain amount of money. But when he goes overseas, he makes a lot of money. So <laughs> I know. how the world perceives the music that is created here, especially the blues and how it's respected and really paid for afar. Yeah, we're going to actually, there's a really important point y'all made during that conversation. I want to come back to, but we're, we're, we're meeting, we're having a conversation with Steve Azar and talking about his show, some highlights from his show in a Mississippi minute. And we'll continue the conversation when we come back after this break. on Super Talk 103.1 is brought to you by J. Allen Toyota on I-10 Exit 38 Gulfport. See all the incredible inventory at allentoyota.com. And remember, when you think Toyota, think J. Allen Toyota. Hey, South Mississippi, it's J. Allen at J. Allen Toyota, and I got something new for you for 2021. It's the J. Allen Certified Collection. What that means is we selected our very best inventory with under 75,000 miles and they're six years old or newer. That comes with a multi-point inspection, a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty and a three day buyback guarantee. So come check out the J. Allen Certified Pre-Owned Collection right here at I-10 Exit 38 in Gulfport or on allentoyota.com. When COVID started, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply began stocking hard to find PPE items. When Amazon and other mega internet companies were out of stock or inflating prices, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply was providing local schools and businesses vital PPE supplies at fair prices. When your office needs PPE supplies, office furniture, or products to keep your business operating, consider Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply. We sell that too. Buy local. Super Talk Mississippi. From outer space, visitors from another world. We've had contact with bug eyed monsters. This is actually a flying saucer. Flying saucer? I'm from another planet. Where late nights are kind of weird. Well, they must have a reason for their visits. The unexplained, the weird, and the downright creepy. Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Late nights. Super Talk Mississippi. If Alexa's part of your life, you've got one more way to access Super Talk. Super Talk Mississippi is now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Once enabled, just say Alexa Play Super Talk Mississippi at any time and start listening. It's that easy. Just one more way to stay informed and connected with your state. Learn more at supertalk.fm slash Alexa. Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. His love for the coast is why he's here. It's Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Steve Azar, my singer, songwriter, friend, the music and cultural ambassador for Mississippi, for Mississippi and the host of In a Mississippi Minute on Super Talk Mississippi. 
Uh, Steve, when we went to break, we were talking about uh, your your good friend Kingfish Ingram, who you had a terrific conversation with on in the Mississippi Minute. And one of the points you made is that when he plays in Mississippi, he makes a little bit of money. When he goes overseas, he makes a lot of money. I remember a point in the conversation with him when you guys were talking, and it was a little bit of disappointment, actually. And that was the point that when he's overseas, it seems that people appreciate the Delta Blues more than when he's in his home state. You know, why do you think that is? Do you think we've sort of taken it for granted or don't appreciate what it means to be sort of the birthplace of American music. What? Sh- how do you synthesize that? I, I don't. I think it's sort of there's something normal about it. You know, I mean, meaning we're around it so much. Um, you, we can oversaturate ourselves. Oh, Kingfish is playing. Um, they get one opportunity to see them. Yeah. We're at the grocery store. You can see us anywhere. And so I just, but there's something nice about that. And that's why home is home. And also Mississippi, I got to tell you, we're full of so many characters, as you know, that somebody feels like, well, you're doing good at that, but look what I've done. And we just have a lot of people to celebrate. And I think it's sort of, it makes home feel very comforting and comfortable. And if I think that if you had to be on at all times, it, it'd be exhausting. So yeah. I sort of see it as a plus. Now, what I'd like to see our state do, and I think that we're working on that. I know we're working on that. Is I'd like us. I feel like we deserve to be Texas. Texas, you can make an entire living within the state. You you don't have to go anywhere. You have to leave state lines. And and if you if you become a hero in music there, you make a big living. And you keep your you're paying taxes. And I mean, it's a no brainer. But. <laughs> Easier said than done, and so, but I do think that we are getting better. So if we can keep Kingfish from leaving, right, and always stand in Mississippi, I don't think he's got a plan to go anywhere. I think that that's your big win. So yeah. artists that are coming along, I mean, maybe we can get Randy Hauser to move back. Like, you know, Marty Stewart has started to spend a lot of time here. You never know if he's going to just all of a sudden go, I'm coming home home. Rather than, yeah. he's got one foot in and one foot out. You know, country, uh, co- Congress, country music, what he's doing is insane for our state. It's going to be brilliant. And for that particular part of the state, uh, we've become good friends during this whole process. And uh, and I just think the more that we can all unite, the more we can figure out ways to make that happen. But look, there's a big creative uh, economic opportunity for uh, the arts of all kinds in Mississippi. If we can keep everybody here, let us go off, do our thing, come back and pay taxes. I mean, I think that that's... That would, that, that's your first step, but you have to create those opportunities. And I think we're starting to do that in a lot of situations. So Actually, I'm going to stick around a little longer as a music and culture ambassador because I feel like now I'm starting to get it and understand yeah. it. You talk about the man hours, the time you put in. The more I'm yeah. doing it, the more I, I feel like, oh, wait, we can do this. And so I think it's, I think that's mattering, but we'll see how that goes. I love I love that during that conversation with Kingfish Ingram, there was a point in the conversation when you were saying, "Hey, go go visit the world, go experience the world, but always come home. Don't ever, don't be drawn to leave." Yeah. I, I was really touched by the fact that you really appreciated how important it was for him to keep his roots in Mississippi and keep that inspiration being here because his opportunity to, to, you know, to, to show the world what is great about Mississippi's talent is there. And you were very sensitive to that. Hey, so what, what I, other, so I, I had to leave though, Ricky, because yeah. I, I didn't have anybody teaching me how to get, become a better writer. So he doesn't have to do that because he's got everybody coming to him. So yeah. this, that, that's the benefit and because he's so talented. Also, also, just talking about Mississippians, and we've talked about Cedric before, but your conversation with Cedric Burnside, I remember a point in the conversation where, you know, he's about to go back on the road. And what that means for him is, is you know, going across the pond again and going into Europe and all of that. Uh, in fact, you guys talked about maybe rendezvousing somewhere along the way. But, but you know, another incredible blues musician from Mississippi who's found a way to uh, really inspire people outside the U.S. And uh, I guess that's not rare, huh? He's, ex- man, he's crazy special. He's articulate. He's brilliant. Uh, he's very humble. He's grounded, got great faith, got a great wife. You can just tell his life is in such a good place. Uh, he works really hard and he gets it. 
I mean, he is a guy that'll sit in line with autographs till till if there's seven hours and he knows that he's got it, he'll do it. I, I'm just saying he's that guy. Um, he reminds me of a country music act in that regard. You know, country we we've stayed in line for hours and hours after a show, drenched in in August in Iowa, and you know what I mean, just just so hot. And you have you have one choice, and that's to stay there and stay till the last person's there to say hello to you. And he's that guy, which is an unusual thing in his world because he doesn't have to be. Uh, also, he, he's just crazy talented, and I love him. I, he's a brother. He's a true brother. You know well, what I go ahead. I'm sorry. What I said. What I said about you two, you know, you did cold water together, but it's clear that there's as much of a of a energy toward collaborating on his side as there is on your side, and future collaborations between you and Cedric are going to be re- very interesting to watch. And there's a lot of magic there potentially, isn't there? You know, it's funny that one song I looked at my I looked at just my uh, you get your uh, streaming numbers in a weekly world around the world from Russia to not everywhere. That song is getting played more and more. It's, it get, it's, it's continuing to you get you get to that place where you're at a peak, but but it should have dropped, but it's not. So it's really doing well still. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of streams a week, uh, and it's not going anywhere. So I think people really got the fact that we were there, and it was a really honest moment. Uh, we we really enjoyed it's the first time to work together in a studio, not on stage, and so it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's paying off, and I, I do want to work with him. We want to make a whole record. We'll, we'll figure out if that ever happens. We both have to have time. <laughs> another, another, conver- yeah, another conversation that sticks out is with singer, excuse me, songwriter. Well, singer too, songwriter yeah. Leslie Satcher. She and um, so again, you know, you think about Cedric as this kind of cool demeanor. You said humble. He's literally drenched with humility when he talks. He, you can tell he cares so much more about you. His empathy is so significant. Sure. Well, every every quality like that that you see in Cedric Burnside just just flows out of Leslie Satcher. What an amazingly grounded person. So I, I've said hello to Sa- Leslie. Maybe it was at the Opry when we played, we played the Grand Ole Opry or whatever. I've seen her multiple times, seen her at the Pancake or at uh, Loveless Cafe or, you know, but I didn't, I've never had that long of a conversation with her. And what I did take from that, you were empathy and all that. I mean, she's she doesn't even. It's almost like everything's a matter of fact. Oh, that's how you know her life. How it all happened. She had such talent, but she also uh, and and I know that she worked hard to get there. But it, I don't. It never felt like she was working at it. You, you know what I mean? She was putting that time in. But it was almost like, oh, you know, Vince Gill, and he's cut every song we've written together, and you know, oh, that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, every song <laughs> we've written together. You know, so I mean, it's almost like, you know, it's so nice of he's so nice, and and, and Vince isn't that nice. Amy's nice, but Vince isn't that nice. You you get on the golf course, or you get on the basketball court, or you get in a, any sporting environment with Vince, he ain't nice. He's competitive. <laughs> he, he he wants to take you out. Now he hasn't been able to take me out in much anything. Vince, sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> he's, uh, but uh, the uh, I have a lot of fond memories of, of uh, with competing against Vince because he, he brought the best out in you. But as a singer, come on, and as a guitar player and as a songwriter, Vince Gill is is absolutely amazing. Yeah, but anyway, that you know, again, this is one of the benefits of in a Mississippi minute. I've never heard the name Leslie Satcher before. Yeah. So I get into this conversation, and she starts talking about these people that they she's worked with over the years, and her long association with Vince Gill that you pointed out, and it's just an interesting conversation. And what makes it more interesting is that you guys sort of come from the same place, and you're able to have this this conversation like over a glass of wine that the rest of us kind of get to listen in on. Hey, I, you know, so getting outside the recording industry for a second, I really enjoyed your conversation with Mark Pattison. Now, for people who don't remember him, he was a, a wide receiver in the NFL and uh, had, you know, had a really good career in the NFL. When he retired from the NFL, he had a, he had a goal to uh, to climb the seven summits of the world. Now, you know, if you don't know what the seven summits are, these are the highest mountains in what we, we what we call the traditional uh, co- uh, uh, continents. And recently, he uh, he he was able to get to the the peak of Everest. But but man, oh man, what an inspiring guy that is. Yeah. Well, got to know him through my sister. He was at the wedding when my he, he went to my brother-in-law played tennis at University of Washington. He played football there at the same time. 
They ended up being in New Orleans where my brother-in-law was at Tulane Med School. So they ended up reuniting, you know, after, after college, and, and he was playing for the Saints. And um, anyway, just a great guy, but this is crazy. He's got a, a podcast called, as he calls a pod, uh, called Finding Your Summit. And he finally got to, to nail it right. He had to wait a year and a half with the pandemic because he was ready to take it on. So he ends up doing it. He fit, I was on the whole journey with him. So I was getting text messages at night. I mean, there's no oxygen. It was amazing. I sort of felt like I was with him, but of course I wasn't. And when he just left the Delta Soul, so 15 days before he was on top of the world. And then he was at the Delta down at the flatlands of the world. And he said getting to the Mississippi Delta was as equally as complicated as climbing Mount Everest. It's not easy. And I said, <laughs> hey, it's not easy getting to Sun Valley either. You know what I mean? Hey, that, that, that road runs two ways. So, but anyway, he, uh, what a story, man. What, and he's in incredible shape. You, you can imagine, right? But you know, people, people die trying to make that journey. And so yeah. it, pretty insane. And I'm actually going to go now the NFL films has made a documentary. He's asked me to go, uh, in September to Sun Valley to play, uh, in honor of that, that night. And also, uh, as well, Jimbo Covert. I'm so excited. I got asked with Edwin McKin. Me and Edwin McCain are going to play some songs for his induction into the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton. So those are the things you talk about my schedule. Those are the things I can't say no to. There's no yeah. way. You know, they when Jimbo calls. And first of all, he's very big. And so I'm not, you know, he'll see me. And, you know, he can he can throw me around like a rag doll. But no, I love him so much. And, and I'm honored. So I've turned down work you know paid gigs because it just that'll come back because he's a good friend so anyway when so we come back when we come back uh we'll talk about a couple of other shows that have been standout shows from uh in a mississippi minute then we'll switch gears and see how does steve evaluate the opportunities that are in front of him now that the, we're coming out of the pandemic what's the ramp up for him look like we'll be back after this break 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. Supertalk.fm has a new look and is more informative than ever with expanded Mississippi news coverage, the latest Mississippi weather, Mississippi sports, and of course, the talk that's important to you. Every show, every podcast, and every late-breaking story. Constantly updating the news the second new developments happen. All in one place, the new Supertalk.fm. Super Talk Mississippi. From outer space, visitors from another world. We've had contact with bug eyed monsters. This is actually a flying saucer. Flying saucer? I'm from another planet. Where late nights are kind of weird. Well, they must have a reason for their visits. The unexplained, the weird, and the downright creepy. Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Late nights. Super Talk Mississippi. Hey, South Mississippi, the future has arrived. It's 2021, and at J. Allen Toyota, we're here to serve you. Want to let you know that we have Allen's lifetime warranty on every new Toyota we sell. That also comes with Toyota Care. That's two years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. We have a great rental department. Our service department's ready to take care of your current vehicle. We're rolling out J. Allen certified pre owned for 2021. You got to come to I 10 Exit 38 right here in Gulfport. You're going to love what we have to offer. When you think Toyota, think Allen Toyota. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. 
talking yeah. to Paul Thorne, Mississippi, true treasure, uh, really incredible recording artist, singer, songwriter, has been doing it a long time, doing it the right way. It's almost like a Forrest Gump thing because uh, you know, I was a boxer, slash, I worked in a furniture factory, slash, I had a gig two nights a week playing my acoustic guitar in a pizza restaurant, slash, I was in the National <laughs> Guard, and wow. uh, you know, all this stuff was going on at the same time. Slash, I had a writing contract with Rick Hall and Fame. In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to The Ben Shapiro Show. Every day, we're driving the debate in America with the fastest moving, hardest hitting, most comprehensive fact-based commentary on the radio. We don't hold back. We never shy away from telling you the truth. Our show is a meeting place of ideas. We have the most important guests and the biggest thinkers in America. Weeknights at 9. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to The Ben Shapiro Show. On Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. It just seems to me people have so much invested in not telling the truth. When you want the truth. Simply because it might hurt some feelings. And nothing but the truth. Lose some subscribers. You want the Gallo Radio Show. I just think in this audience, you still believe that if you tell the truth, you come out ahead. The Gallo Radio Show. And if you tell yourself otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Mornings on Super Talk Mississippi. And now, it's Coast View with Ricky Matthews. Brought to you by J. Allen Toyota, Gulf Coast Business Supply, and AGJ Systems and Networks on Super Talk 103.1 FM. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Steve Azar, singer-songwriter from Mississippi, the, the cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi, and host of In the Mississippi Minute here on Super Talk. Have a couple of other uh, special guests that you've had along the way that I just want to kind of lean back to and, and, and highlight real quick, and then we'll talk about, you know, what's next for you as you sort of come out of the uh, pandemic. Man, I hadn't heard the name Jim McMahon in a long time, and uh it was great for you to connect with him. I'm sure that everybody who listened to that show, and if you didn't hear it, just go to Spotify or your favorite podcast platform and pull it up. But, man, his contributions, he was a colorful character at Chicago Bears. It was fun to kind of catch up with him, wasn't it? Oh, man, I love Jimmy. We saw each other. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what event it was recently. Gosh, dog, I can't remember where we were. So many events, but we spent a good bit, bit of time together. Man, he's the best. Uh, he's gone through a lot. He's got they got it sort of figured out now where he goes to New York every three months and they drain this fluid off the back of it in the spine. And he said it feels like you're flushing his like a flush toilet and his brain. He feels it just come out. So yeah. he's been able to sort of uh, find comfort, you know, and he can yeah. tell when it's time to go back. Um, anyway, just what a remarkable guy. He he couldn't come to the Delta Soul when there's an opportunity to help our wounded wounded soldiers. He's all in. And I promise you, there are more wounded soldiers that have his personal cell phone than anyone else in the world. He cares about them when he does his event. We're going to go do his event uh, soon in Arizona when he, he is surrounded by them and he loves them. And I feel like that it's a beautiful thing because it matters so much to him to see these kids come home uh, broken. And he wants to be a part of fixing there be a healing process and He's a beautiful guy, man. He's just beautiful. And, he, and obviously, he's on the cover of Rolling Stone, for goodness sake. Come on. <laughs> of course. Yeah, but you know, you're alluding to his his uh, repeated concussions and other injuries that he got along the way. And he's really, for people who haven't paid attention to Jim McMahon, he's you know made his, his um, track to you know stay as healthy as he possibly can, very public, so people can understand what he's going through. But he's had a really tough time. But he's done, a, as you pointed out, he's done a good job of really finding what worked for him in this situation, but it is, you know, it's something he's going to have to live with the rest of his life, huh, Steve? Sure. I mean, I think he understands diet and all that. And he has like, a, look, Jimmy Mack likes to have a lot of fun. So uh, there's a there's a lot of Coors Light that he, you know what the crazy thing is? And Mack, he looks like he, he looks incredible. Like his body looks like it did. The, the only the only odd thing that's really hard to, to take in is when you're on the beach with him and he comes out in the thong, kind of the water. You think you're about to see Bo Derek coming out of the water. 
and all of a sudden it's Jim McMahon, and you just go, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trip. <laughs> and then uh, lastly, real quickly, your dear friend, Gary Valentine, you guys go back a long way and uh, you had the opportunity to see him recently. Tell me about how special those conversations are. He walked on my bus. I was with John Daly and I had just become friends. We both had our buses parked together at the Monday after the Masters, uh, Darius and, and the boys and at their event. It was the first year for me to go there. And all of a sudden, Gary Valentine walks on the bus. Well, I knew he was, but I just, you know, and I was playing a song, and I was playing You Don't Know a Thing, actually, and uh, off my Andy Nola record that Daly was featured in. And he just started making these noises around it and all that. And I said, what the heck? Anyway, we've been inseparable, inseparable since. Uh, he is truly one of my dearest friends I've ever had in my life. He just texted me. It's funny. He just texted right then. I just saw GB show up. They're in New Orleans right now, Kevin James' brother. Uh, and they go by different stage names, but um, uh, incredible faith. Uh, we're you know we're all Catholic. I've been to retreats at Kevin's house. That's just unbelievable. Um, and Kevin's house, the centerpiece is a chapel. You go to mass in Latin, and it's old school and it's beautiful. And so uh, it's a good fit for us. But um, they're shooting. You know he's playing Sean Payton right now uh, in New Orleans when he went and had to go coach high school. I've had the last two feature tracks, so I'm going to say that I'm hoping I'm getting the next one. Uh, but uh, so anyway, we'll see how that works out. But I was hoping that Kevin and Adam Sandler, and uh, who's producing the movie with Kevin uh, and GB, were going to make the Delta Soul, but uh, they had COVID. The, one of the their stars, Taylor, uh, he's a big actor. Everybody will know him. He's one of the coaches as well. He got COVID and he shut everybody down. So anyway. It would have been an added addition at the Delta Soul to have those three, but our Delta Soul was rocking this year, so we were good. Hey, they, real quick, they were a lot, you know, they're, they're aligned together, but to, to be aligned with Adam Sandler these days, he literally has the Midas touch. And, uh, yeah. And it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how that movie does. I bet it's going to do really well. Hey, so tell me uh, real quick about, you know, you've mentioned it a couple of times, but you, your fundraiser. And your foundation is near and dear to you. You actually had a face-to-face -face fundraiser recently. How cool was that? We occupied an entire hotel. Uh, we had our, it was incredible. Uh, we probably filled up about 400 rooms. You know, we, we, we had 25 states represented. Uh, a lot of new celebrities that had never been here before, uh, including Michael Ruzioni, Miracle on Ice. I mean, he loved it. I mean, they're, you know, I'm going to his, and we're, Gwen and I are going to go to his in August. Uh, Dan Jansen, I've done his event. He finally, him and his wife, Karen, finally came here. Uh, just so many incredible, Dwight Hicks, Greg Lloyd from the Steelers. Dwight played for the Niners with Montana. Um, Pete Shaw, his brother was one of the most famous trumpeters in the world. Uh, and he went, to, he was an NFL player for a while. I mean, it just really great group of new folks. And uh, Mark Patterson came, like I said. Anyway, we raised a lot of money. It was very successful. We were, as Craig Ray says, visit Mississippi. This is all about hugs, handshakes, and high fives, and we were able to do all three. And uh, it was beautiful. I mean, it was, it was, and listen, we had weather. We had crazy weather. I mean, I'm so, I was so tired of just making decisions, but sometimes <laughs> you make decisions and you're like, we've always done the big 10 outside the big stage, and it's hot. You know, we went inside and it was better. So next year we're going to stay inside. I'm going to quit worrying about being outside and, and the bottom line is we're able to continue to give. Last year we did that, you know, it was our 10th year, Ricky. So uh, last year we did it virtually and we did really well because we didn't have any expenses. Yeah. This year we did really well, as probably as good as that with expenses. So uh, we get to continue to give and that, that means everything to my wife, Glenn and I. And uh, it's been our greatest achievement in life next to watching our kids do their thing. That's so, that's so awesome. Okay, you get up this morning. And you're looking at sort of, you're in your war room, so to speak, and you're trying to figure out, okay, what hill am I going to go tackle next? What what are the things that are sitting in front of you right now? How, what does it look like to be a singer-songwriter coming out of the pandemic when you've got a band to worry about and all these different constituencies to think and worry about? How do you decide, decide that? But let's start with, what are you looking at? Well, I look at a list, right? And then I, I, on my list, I've got, I call it potential and confirmed work. And then I've got a list of opportunities. And then some of those things are recurrent, like an annual event that happens. So you like our Mockingbird Music Festival. We, we're put, I'm, I'm doing the Mighty Roots Music Festival with my buddy Howard on Stovall Farms. It's going to be a big festival the weekend for the King Biscuit. The goal is to turn 
and bring everybody into the Delta and let them go to Memphis, New Orleans, Jackson. Let them experience the Gulf Coast. Spend two weeks in the Delta, you know, or, or, or two weeks in our the city of Memphis and and experience all of what we have because there's so many things that we offer. So the economy, the economic impact can be just so vast, but the work behind it is insane. So it's very, it's a, it's a lot. So I look at that every day and go, what can I do? Um, but so with a couple music festivals, our Mockingbird Songwriter Music Festival now is going just in Denver. We sold it out. Uh, I started that just a, just a series, right? Well, now it's in Palm Springs. It's in, it's a, it's going, it's, it, it's at Old Waverly, George Bryan, three a year, my buddy, George, um, there's, we're doing it all over the map now. And so that's becoming a thing of its own sort of, it's called the birthplace. It's, it's music city comes to the birthplace of American music and it's great hit songwriters, all of us together. I say, uh, sorry, but I host that and I do my thing and they do their thing. And it's just, it's, it's an incredible night of entertainment and great culinary experience. So you got incredible food and incredible music and it's, it's an impactful night. So we're doing that as well. And uh, we started doing it in Flowood and we worked out really good. It just, as we've been doing it in Oxford, did it in Greenville, did it, and we're all over the map now. Doing it in Jonesboro, Arkansas now. But I have to make go, okay, I've got my real shows, my regular band shows. I need to do about 25 of those a year. I need to do about 25 Mockingbird or, or solo shows. And then I got the Mockingbird. Then I've got 15 celebrity charity events that I got to do. We got to do them because I can't say no. So, and then I'm producing, I love to produce other acts. This kid in South Mississippi that we're making, I got Nashville buzzing quite a bit right now. Um, that I'm a, we're partnering up, it looks like. Tyler Tisdale, he's special. And I, and I love him like a son now. So um, we're working then. My, my kid, Jade, that we managed, just won Best Video of the Year at Arkansas Music Awards. We beat out Pam Tillis and some other big acts. And so that's going on. And my radio show matters to me more than ever. I love doing it in Mississippi Minute. I love our team Super Talk. And then there's about 10 things, 20, about 15 things, 20 things I do as a music and culture ambassador. Just left Orlando. It's a lot. And I could love to consult songwriters. So uh, that's only part of it, you know? <laughs> so, but, but I have a list and I go down it. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. But I'm saying yes to a lot of things this year. It's very, it's overwhelming. So when we when we come back, we'll talk about um, the calendar getting packed now, and then what it's going to be like to be able to serve your band mates again. You get them back on the road with you, and get them making a living again. That's going to be exciting. We'll we'll come back and continue our conversation with Steve Azor after this break. You can also listen live to Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on your Amazon Alexa devices. Once you've enabled the skill, just say, Alexa, open Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast. Supertalk.fm has a new look and is more informative than ever with expanded Mississippi news coverage, the latest Mississippi weather, Mississippi sports, and of course, the talk that's important to you. Every show, every podcast, and every late-breaking story. Constantly updating the news the second new developments happen. All in one place. The new supertalk.fm. Hey, South Mississippi, it's Jay Allen at Jay Allen Toyota, and I got something new for you for 2021. It's the Jay Allen Certified Collection. What that means is we selected our very best inventory with under 75,000 miles and they're six years old or newer. That comes with a multi-point inspection, a 10-year, 100,000 mile warranty, and a three-day buyback guarantee. So come check out the J. Allen Certified Pre-Owned Collection right here at I-10 Exit 38 in Gulfport or on allentoyota.com. When COVID started, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply began stocking hard to find PPE items. When Amazon and other mega internet companies were out of stock or inflating prices, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply was providing local schools and businesses vital PPE supplies at fair prices. When your office needs PPE supplies, office furniture or products to keep your business operating, consider Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply. We sell that too, buy local. 
Super Talk Mississippi. It just seems to me people have so much invested in not telling the truth. When you want the truth. Simply because it might hurt some feelings. And nothing but the truth. Lose some subscribers. You want the Gallo Radio Show. I just think in this audience, you still believe that if you tell the truth, you come out ahead. The Gallo Radio Show. And if you tell yourself otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Mornings on Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi, your new home for the Ben Shapiro Show. We don't hold back. We never shy away from telling you the truth. The most electrifying national talk show on air today. We have the most important guests and the biggest thinkers in America. Ben Shapiro, brutally breaking down the issues of the day. From politics to pop culture, we take a look at all of it. So don't miss out. Weeknights at 9. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to the Ben Shapiro Show. On Super Talk Mississippi. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We're talking to Del Barra. Take me back to growing up and what it was like in the household with a dad like Yogi Berra. You know, we grew up with his funny sayings. You know, I remember dad managing the mess, and me, Larry, and Timmy are watching the game on TV, and all of a sudden, two streakers run out of the stands on TV, and the camera flips away from them. So when he gets home, me, Larry, and Timmy say, hey, Dad, those streakers, what were they, boys or girls? We need to know. And Dad looked us right in the eye and said, I couldn't tell they had bags over their head. (laughs) In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app. And now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. 106.3 Casino Radio is here. Tune to 106.3 to discover all of our must-see attractions and everything that's happening at our 12 incredible casino resorts. Where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and where to play. 106.3 Casino Radio has you covered with everything you need to know to help make your visit here to the coast one you'll never forget. Turn on 106.3 Casino Radio or listen now on our website, CasinoRadio1063.com. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View, uh, the final segment. And, uh, you know, I'm visiting with my friend Steve Azar. We've, we've really grown close over the last little bit over a year now. It's always good to just kind of touch base with him. He has such a sense of things. And, you know, it's interesting, Steve. Hasn't doing In a Mississippi Minute, the, what you learn from your guests sort of changes some of the choices you make, doesn't it? Learning to listen. You talk about GV. He said, Steve, why don't you listen a little more on your show? In the beginning, I felt like, I should, do I need to be funny? Do I need to, you know, I want to be a radio guy? Well, no, then I just, after he said that, I said, what do you mean? He goes, let people tell their story. And I said, okay. And it became easier. It became more insightful and more interesting for our viewers. And yeah, I've learned so much about myself too, that I'm able to shut up and listen. That's all, that's always been, I've always been asked the questions. We talked about this and it's the opposite. So yes, there. Um, but, but also you talk about what we were talking about a minute ago and we're out, off air. You, you're, you got tired listening to me tell my schedule and the travel. I still enjoy it because at the end of the day, I love writing songs because I get to take it to the people. And I still love it like I did when I was 12. Yeah. So that's the problem I have. I'm never going to get over that. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough now to understand that, you know, being on stage and getting to perform in whatever environment with your band by yourself telling stories is the greatest gift that I've ever been given. And yeah. it's still enjoyable, like I'm like I'm a kid playing sports, you know, like you're compete and you and we're comp- competitive. So it's not like we're doing it. We're 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 in the major league still, but I know my my gig is different now. I know when I moved home, I made some choices to be with family. Um, I'm also just became brand ambassador for the Dancing Rabbit. You know, the the folks in Philadelphia, Mississippi. I love them so much. I played that Choctaw Fair. We're giving them a country country trail marker soon. And the Shoba County Fair is getting a country trail marker. Um, uh, it's just very exciting and I really enjoyed working with them. And then, um, the Delta Music Institute, another thing, I'm 10 years as artist and resident and it matters to me. Mm. So, um, when I reach out every year, go, am I still good? 
they go, you're good. But they got to realize something that I, I feel like I can re I really have a voice or something like that because I'm still in the game and I've got friends that are heavily in the game and I love sharing that with, with our youth. So uh, uh, that is the confidence side that I have. And also I'm humbled to get to do it. Yeah. What I said to Steve was there was a time in my career where I did like 650,000 frequent flyer miles in a two year period. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I look back on it as an exciting time in my life, but I wouldn't want to go back there. But the business model for you is different now. What? What? I mean, you get so much gratification when you travel. This opportunity to touch as many people as possible. Another thing is streaming is where you know part of, is part of your business model. So you need to touch as many people as you possibly can. So whether it's through a fundraising effort, or a concert, or a solo show, or through the songwriters music festival, whatever it might be. Um, the more people you touch, the better it's going to be for you in the long run. And does that does that factor into your thinking? I think what factors into my think, yes. But also, I had throat surgery once, so which which stopped me dead in my tracks for a couple of years. So I don't want to go back there. And like when we did the Mockingbird Sorry Festival, I had no business singing because I lost my voice because it got cold that night before. It was drizzling on us. I was up dealing with everything. All my friends I wanted to make sure because they were we were hosting my friends. You know, I wanted to make sure like they were at our house, and so I I made a big mistake there, and uh, my voice hurt for about two days afterwards. So uh, I had no voice to sing. I know I, I shouldn't have done it, but I did uh, because I'm. So I've got to watch things like that, and the time I put in consulting. When I get off of this thing, I'm consulting a songwriter. Uh, via Skype for two hours. Uh, so, uh, and I love doing it, but I got to make sure I'm drinking water and maybe yeah. suck a cough drop or keeping my throat moist. Well, I've said this before, but uh, for people who didn't hear it or, or, or maybe didn't, didn't watch that show, at one point, Steve was actually one of the top, if not the top celebrity golfers in the world, and that was Golf Digest. Doing all you're doing now, Steve, it, it's not good for your uh -huh. golf game, is it? I'm awful. It's <laughs> awful. And everybody goes, oh, that Music City golf, that was a big – I said, no, I was working hard. Talking about putting your time, I had triangle of balls every day. And and during that stretch, I had seven hole-in-ones and one on a par four with Jim McMahon on the green. <laughs> so in the Virgin Islands, but the bottom line is I hadn't had any sense. Now, I had all pink. Those all were made with pink clubs. It's funny. I had a dream last night. Right now, I've got no pink clubs in my bag since I've made those hole-in-ones. So that's probably dumb. Second of all, uh, I had a dream that I put them back in the bag. So it's funny you're bringing it up. But when I was working at it, I had the satisfaction of competing and winning probably one, probably 50, 60 music tournaments. So, uh, and with I was paired together or on my own, um, and it was a lot of fun. And Golf Digest really recognized it. And I got to spend time with Arnold Palmer. And it was, it was beautiful. But, you know, I did playing lessons with Kenny Perry after I had a car wreck. I couldn't take the club back to here. I, now I can take it all the way back, but for about five years, I had bad, really bad back issues. And so I had to learn to play with a different swing, and it looked awful. Uh, but it, I became effective with that. But now it's a mess. And I shot 74 the other day, and I shot 85 to back it. So I don't know. Who knows? It's, it's an ugly it's an ugly 5, 6 handicap that's really not that. But I used to be down there. I used to be well, like, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find your routine because you have a passion. No, no, no. I'm good with it. It's fine. Okay. I've done it. <laughs> So what, when uh, when you're around my wife, Ann, we'll have to have you guys go outside and play horse. She's never been beaten horse. She was okay, most, we're going to talk about that. Most, that. most athletic in high school. And I know you can rip the bottom out of a net, too. It'd be fun to watch her and you go after each other. Hey, listen, we're out of time, Steve. It's been a pleasure to, meet, to uh, catch up with you. Uh, keep up the great work. Good luck sort of getting your calendar where it's yeah, where would, manageable. Uh, I love and, you, brother. You're so special to our state. And uh, just, I love being a part of Team Super Talk with you. And uh, it's just been a blast. And you're the best, man. You're, 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 you're the best, too, man. I really appreciate spending time with you. And we'll stay in touch. Take care. And we'll see you tomorrow.